In reviewing some of the previous uh, videos that we have done on textiles, I thought we should uh, maybe talk a little bit about uh, the major divisions uh, because it sounded a little bit confused and uh, this is normal with uh, with art history and this is normal with dealing with collections is that you uh, you revisit and uh, sometimes you come up with new and better ideas or better ways to to um, divide up and to frame and to contextualize uh, different types of art. So I want to I want to just talk about textiles in general. So in general, with Himalayan art, we have two principal subjects. The first subject is figurative, figurative art, and what that means is it means. Um, scroll works in Tibet called uh, tonkas, but scroll works um, that are mimicking uh, in many ways paintings. So the, the figurative textiles can be of deities, uh, the Buddha, bodhisattvas, uh, teachers, all kinds of subjects that involve uh, different people or, 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 or certain types of deities. Um, and these can be small, they can be quite small, uh, or they can be the average size of a scroll work, or they can be these giant applique scroll works um, called giant applique tonkas that hang down the sides of buildings in um, Tibet and the Himalayan regions. And in places like Mongolia, where you don't have such great uh, buildings, then they might have uh, a giant scaffold set up and then a, a, a giant uh, a textile tonka would be, would be um, shown against the scaffold uh, for special events only, of course. Um, also with, uh, with figurative art, uh, they can be copies of, uh, of paintings or sets of paintings, such as the famous set of Panchen Lama incarnations. Um, there's a famous set done in the 18th century. And then this set was replicated uh, for, for decades um, in Hangzhou, China. And it was done as uh, weavings. Uh, they were done on, on looms and uh, they were mass produced. So you find these, these textile weavings of uh, the various Panchen Lamas in museums all around China and various places because they were, they were mass produced. Okay, so the two principal subjects for textiles are figurative. Now the second one is uh, decorative and the decorative does not involve any figures but it's, it has to do with uh, temple banners and temple hangings and all the different ribbons and paraphernalia and the ribbon and, and handle that goes on a double-sided drum. Uh, and this also can apply to dance costumes, the Mahakala sort of uh, apron that you find, the, the very wrathful face of an apron that you find on the front of uh, certain dance costumes. Um, very decorative um, hats and also carpets. So the, these are the two types. One is figurative and it falls more into the category of more fine art. And then the other is more decorative and then it's more, um, it's really falling into more handicraft and, and just decorative objects. Now, aside, uh, uh, alongside the two principal subjects, then we have the three main techniques. Now the three main techniques are applique, embroidery and weaving. These are the three and they can each can overlap. Not so much with the with the weaving but applique and embroidery often overlap and with embroidery uh, you often have also uh, semi-precious stones that can be sewn into um, uh, on, the, on the surface of certain works to make them more beautiful or to make them more valuable or to uh, place semi-precious stones as an offering. So that's it, just trying to catch up a little bit with textiles. Um, you can press the like button, you can subscribe, you can join HAR on Patreon, and you can also make a donation on the homepage of Himalayan Art Resources.